because we don't have solar, one thing I feel like we need to add when we're traveling on these uh, longer trips is a DC to DC charger. Our new truck has the dual alternators and it puts out a nice charge, but the problem is the small wire that you get going through that seven pin connector is just not enough to uh, really keep your batteries charged. Another problem is that we have lithium iron phosphate batteries in our trailer and they charge differently than your lead acid batteries that your truck would have. So this DC to DC charger has a lithium setting and it makes it so it charges it the way a lithium needs. So I have quite a few things here to make this install work. So I started out with a four gauge wire. This is from New Concepts. Uh, I've used these guys a whole lot when I was playing with a lot of car audio. They're a really good company. You know you're getting a true four gauge wire. I like that. I bought a fuse block so I can connect it up near the battery. Always fuse any connection that you're running towards the battery or from the battery. And I bought these connectors. I've seen used quite a bit. We're gonna try those out. And this will connect from back here in the bed. My plan is to try to mount it right into this uh, plastic piece where there would normally be bed lights here. But I'm gonna mount that in there. And then I'm gonna run the other end run this in uh, from my trailer and it'll connect in here and I'll have wire long enough to reach the tongue it'll be just like the uh, seven pin connector I may even uh, zip tie it to that connector so also I've got connectors for the four gauge I've got expandable sleeve this is one inch and I hope that I can get both wires in there. I should be able to. I'll use the one inch on the trailer side. And then I have this uh, half inch that I'm gonna run the four gauge from the battery, the hot wire from the battery to the back of the bed. And then I will tie in the ground to the frame. So let's get started. expandable wire loom uh, all the way from one end to the other on the power wire you can see it goes in there gives a nice clean look one thing I didn't show uh, once I cut the hole through this plastic piece I put a little uh, hot glue in there on each side and tried to get the back as much as I could just to try to hold it in place to make sure when we're unplugging and plugging it in. We're not pushing it all the way through or pulling it out. I just need to add the loom, wire loom here on this uh, ground wire and find a good spot to ground it on the frame. I'll have to look around and see what I'm gonna hook that to and I'll try to show you that as soon as I find something. Truck is wrapped up. This is what it looks like in the bed. Underneath, 
comes down from the plug, the ground wire goes, attaches there to the, it's not really the frame, but a lot of the uh, ground wires up front are attached to the aluminum body, so we'll see how that works. I may have to move it later. I ran the uh, power wire through this support. It comes out of the, uh, the other side. Hopefully you can see it there. I gotta figure out how to get this to stay up, so I'll figure something out with that. I got really lucky. Uh, four gauge wire will fit in between these. Um, so that's great. It fits above that support and slides right up under there or right above it. So I basically did that all the way to the front until it came out, out from under the bed. I attached it to that wire, ran that all the way to the front. So then the wire runs behind the fender well and up here, there's a fuse box here, so I tried to run the wire up and zip tie it to this piece here so it wasn't in the way of that fuse panel, even though it would be really hard to get to anyway. Then it comes over to this fuse block, and I've got to work on the uh, ends of these wires, so I'm going to get some wire ferrules and put on there and some more heat shrink. Just didn't have that stuff today. And then the end will slide around and hook there. I'm gonna add a battery tray. Actually, I've already added a battery tray underneath where the electronic closet is, electrical closet is up here. So I just made this out of aluminum angle and a piece of uh, 3 8 inch plywood. And this is the battery I'll be using. I actually have two of these. I'm gonna move them down here. So I'm gonna use a heater for these things because they are lithium iron phosphate and they can't be charged below freezing. So I'll work on all that at some point. Uh, but right now I'm gonna put a layer of insulation back here, actually two layers. I'm gonna make a piece of foam that has a cutout for both batteries to sit in so they won't move around. And then I'm going to run my wiring up into the uh, electrical cabinet like I have, like, like it was before, maybe a little neater. And I'm also going to run the charger. It's going to sit on this wall over here. And it will run to the battery, and then everything will run up top into a uh, terminal. And everything should work from there. Well, let's do this. A few moments later... I've finally been able to add this other side, which is the opposite side of that fitting, into four gauge wire. It runs, it follows the cord for the trailer up here, down the neck of the trailer, and into these, these ports. Had to drill two three quarter inch holes and uh, these go through, they have a rubber piece here and when you tighten down on this nut, it closes that rubber piece in and it seals off the wires so water doesn't get through. So while we're here, I'll go ahead and show you this. This wire actually comes out, this is two wires that goes out, follows that same line. We have these two outside lights and we have this push button switch. Uh, it stays on red. When it's not on, when you press it in, it turns off. I can change that to be on when the lights are on or off all the time. I'm gonna leave it like this, we'll see. I may change it, but lights up nice and bright. And it lights up this whole area underneath. And that's gonna be really convenient uh, if we go anywhere at night or get to a campsite at night. So inside, we have these two 30 amp hour lithium iron phosphate batteries connected together uh, parallel, which is a 12 volt system, should be 60 amp hours. These hopefully will be replaced in the future with something much larger. 
and we added this DC to DC battery charger. It's a 20 amp, a Renogy, and hopefully on this upcoming trip, we'll see how this works. That was the whole point for all the four gauge wire going from, from the back of the truck up to here. Um, it does turn on with this, so this red wire is a, uh, like a power on accessory type wire that cuts on with the truck. It actually cuts on with the driving lights. So I have to have those on for this to work. It was a very involved install, but not terribly hard, just running wires, a whole lot of wires. Well, after our long trip to Florida with about four or five, uh, five hour stints of driving, I'm happy to say that uh, the charging system worked well. Uh, it works a lot like a car amplifier. I noticed when uh, I'd start the truck, turn the driving lights on, if the battery was down a little bit, I could walk back here and both cooling fans were running. And again, it sounded like a like an old school amplifier with, with fans on it. Um, the charge never dropped below 13.3, I think was the lowest I saw. Uh, all the way to Florida and back and that was running our refrigerator uh, we were charging laptops and uh, all sorts of iPads and things that that electronics that we have uh, but like I said we drove uh, six hours was probably the longest stint we drove and the refrigerator was just as cold as it was when we left uh, we had ice cream in the freezer it never melted so that was the goal and it worked out well. So I'm really liking this. I, when I got ready to buy the Renogy, I was a little worried about that. I know everyone pushes Victron, which I would love to have that, but for weekend warriors and you know, just every now and again, RVers, uh, I didn't think it was worth the money. Although I was worried about the reliability of the Renogy and uh so far so good we've only gone on one trip it was a really long trip but i like it so far i think it's going to do what we need to do and i think that as our battery bank grows it's going to uh be perfect for that so uh hope you enjoyed the video if you have any questions about this install let me know and i appreciate you guys watching and don't forget to watch our other content thanks Bye.